visitors from Adelaide, the Ross family. Oh, I love it when you go to my Praise God. You excited for today? I am. We're going to go back to an old basic because I just see the need for it. I'm going to speak to you about the power of your tongue, what it does, how to harness it, get it healed. Amen. How many of you know we need our tongue healed? Amen. You may not, but I do. <laughs> Before I go any further, praise God. Our brother Paul Davies, just put your hand up, Paul, so I know you are, has written this book on the history of the church. He's terrific to listen to. He, came, he comes and preaches and he speaks on these things and that's worth this book, hasn't it? Some of the stuff that he shared down here. Praise God. I, he's given me a box. I want to give them out today. See if we can get at least one of them to each family in the place. How many did you give me? Oh, well, I'm going to keep two. <laughs> <laughs> And Paul, Paul adheres to what we do. Quite a long time ago, the Lord said to me, he said, don't turn my house into a den of thieves. He says, whatever you do here, do it freely. He's doing all these books freely. Amen. He's given them out freely. So praise God. Um, he's a humble, lowly bus driver. <laughs> He's actually one of the brightest dudes I've ever met. And you, you'll get a lot out of these books. So um, there's a box there as you leave. Just go and grab a book out of that box, will you? Is that all right? Yeah? I'll give them away. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right. In fact, some of the offerings going to him today, okay, because I want to bless him anyway. This has cost him money to do, but he does, he just gives it away. He acts in faith, follows our teaching, which is the teaching of the Lord. Freely given, freely give. Amen. You'll be blessed. I can't tell you how you'll be blessed, but you will. You'll be incredibly blessed. Um, and I can't believe it. I've been reading a book over this last week. I don't know who gave me these. Does your tongue need healing? Who gave me those? Anybody here? I've been given about five or six of these. And my tongue obviously needed more healing. Than... <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm still alive. Because <laughs> the power of life and death is in the tongue. Isn't it? <laughs> Derek Prince. Fantastic teacher. I just want to read some highlights. So as I'm reading it this morning, I, I, I was reading it to Denise, not because her tongue needed healing, <laughs> but because we get to talk over breakfast. <laughs> and, uh, and as I was reading it to her, there was one section in here that just blew my mind. And it was this. Derek Prince was in the army and he was running an army hospital. And he had a doctor who used to do the rounds with him. And uh, this doctor would ask two questions of the patients as he went through. He would say to them, how do you feel? And then rapidly after that, he would say, poke out your tongue. And, and I laughed because the Holy Spirit had me do that at a meeting in Dandenong. I, I got invited to Melbourne to do a meeting in a Spanish-speaking church. And I wanted to practice my Spanish because I was going to Spain the next month. And, um, and I was going to do some sharing over there. So when this guy invited me, this, this uh, South South American church, but it was a Spanish uh, pastor. He invited me to speak, and I don't even know how the connection was made, but I was running late. 
I had to travel from one side of Melbourne to the other. I did three meetings that day and, and that um, I was really late. They were partway through the worship and he was starting to fret because his speaker hadn't turned up. And well, I did a deal with him on the phone. I'd, I'd never met the man, but I did a deal with him on the phone. I said, look, I want to preach in Spanish and, and will you do the interpretation for the English church, the English part of the church? He said, yep. But when I got there late, he said, you will now do the English and I'll do the Spanish. <laughs> and I can be a bit hard sometimes. <laughs> if you know me, you know I can be prickly. <laughs> I said, I said, no way, mate. I said, uh, you gave me your word and I've given you mine. I've kept my word, I'm here. <laughs> so I expect that you would keep your word and let me do the Spanish. So he's disgruntled, mate, what a good start to a meeting. <laughs> and he walks and he's like this. <laughs> and I'm looking to the Lord. I said, this is a great start, Lord. What a, how am I going to deal with this fellow? And the Lord said, don't worry, Raph, close your eyes and then open them straight away. I'm going to show you something. So I closed my eyes, opened them up, and I saw this. I saw sickness over everybody. The whole church was full of sickness. And it looked like seaweed hanging off their heads. It looked terrible. It was a shocking looking thing. It was all green and almost like a vegetable plate. <laughs> Those things that you all think are healthy. <laughs> <laughs> it was hanging off them. And I'm looking, and the Lord says, what do you see? I said, I see a lot of green slime on the people. He said, Raph, that's sickness. Now, this is all happening in a split second, okay? And uh, I said, what do you want me to do? He said, well, what would a doctor do? I said, I don't know. What would a doctor do? He said, he caused them to stick their tongues out and see the condition of their body. So when I read this this morning, I'm thinking, this is how God trains people. <laughs> he trains people by speaking to them, showing them things. And I said, what am I going to do? He said, tell them all to poke their tongues out. So all of a sudden, the whole congregation going, nah. <laughs> I said, okay, put them away. I know your problem already. As they poked their tongues out, God spoke to me. He said, the reason they're sick is because of their tongue. They speak terribly against this pastor in this church. And I could understand that. I would too if I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I got <to> own up. <laughs> but I'm looking at them and he said, you're here to fix this problem today. And he didn't tell me everything. He just, he'll tell you what you need to know, nothing else. But I'll tell you what he wanted in that place. He wanted that place spirit-filled that day. He wanted them all speaking in tongues. Isn't it amazing? And, I, and I, uh, I didn't understand that at the beginning of the meeting, but my God, I certainly did by the end of the meeting. I had a word of knowledge for some old man sitting at the front. I should teach you how how these things come sometimes. But he reminded me of my dad. He and he looked like my dad. And I said, what's the matter with that man? And the Lord said, he's sick. He's sick because his family are fighting amongst themselves. Their family are fighting amongst themselves, he said, and it's made him sick. He said, they're actually having problems with the inheritance. They're already carving it up. He's still alive. <laughs> And so I ministered to this man. I said, God tells me that you're worried because your family's carving up your inheritance and you're still breathing. <laughs> Is that faith or not? I don't know. <laughs> faith that if he's going to die, they're going to get something? Praise God. It made me stop and question some things. And I said that to him and he said, he said yeah. I said, stand up. And as he stood up, he was instantly healed because he forgave his family. And then I turned to the pastor and I said, you guys speak in tongues in this place? He said, no, and you're not going to either. Well, he's the one that's got the cord. I've got one of these things that move with me. <laughs> I said, sorry, mate, I'm, 
Gotta do what God tells me. So I did what I'm doing now. I'm walking down through the aisles, but I was, I was praying in tongues. <laughs> Oh, there's a good time. But something funny happened in this place at this time, and it was this. People started howling, <laughs> falling off their seats and crying out in tongues. This, this is the whole church. It, it sounded like a rushing wind came through the place, and it was a mess. In two seconds flat, the whole place was a mess. I was excited because I knew God was doing it, but I didn't understand what he was doing, but he was filling them with the Holy Spirit. And this man had stopped the flow of the Spirit in that place. He was angry with me when I got back, but by this time people are throwing wheelchairs away and sticks and they're just running out to the front. They're being healed as they're going. And they're coming out the front. This is at Punt Road Dandenong. It's a Baptist church. They come running out the front and they were getting touched. Now I turned to the pastor, I said, you better help me pray for these people. They're your, they're your mob, they're your sheep, you know, they're the sheep you're looking after. He went, forget it, just took off. I never saw, to this day, I haven't seen that man again. He was so ticked. And uh, I, I called Denise, I said, come pray with me. She said, what am I going to pray? I said, pray in tongues. You don't, need, you don't need to understand what God's doing in them. Just pray in the spirit. And if he shows you, what a bonus. Good lesson learned, you know. So we prayed in tongues. And uh, we saw miracles, didn't we, Nice? Saw incredible miracles. Now, there was a young Indian boy in the crowd. Would have been 11 years old. And then when the meeting's finished, this kid goes, Thus says the Lord. <laughs> he says, This church was an Ephesus church, has now become a Philadelphia church. Come out of a myth of a kid this big. And I'm thinking, oh, well, that's it. I'll go find this pastor. Well, this young lady come running out, this young girl about 18. She's bawling her eyes out. And she said, thank you for coming. We know you're a man of God. We've been praying for the church to be baptised in the spirit, but my dad wouldn't let it happen. How's that? My dad wouldn't let it happen. She said, no one's been game to come in here and do that, but God produced that. I, I, we can't take any glory for that. He wanted that place filled with the Holy Spirit. He wanted that gift of tongues flowing in people's mouths because through it, life and death comes out. The new nature, which is the Spirit of God in you, releases power every time you speak in tongues. Oh, that's good to know, isn't it? Because that's the nature you've taken on. You've invited Christ into your life. And so it leads to a lot of things. And as I read this little book, I wish someone had given this to me when I was young Christian because it would have saved a lot of time. I've learned all this stuff over the years. But it would save me a lot of time. And some of the things need to be refreshed in us. That when we pray in the Spirit, we're actually doing something on behalf of God. We're allowing him to speak. We're allowing him to, to push into a place and release his power. And then I started to read some of the scriptures that go with it. It says uh, in Matthew 12, Verse 33 to 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit will be good or make the tree rotten and its fruit rotten. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, he's speaking to the religious leaders of his time, leaders, okay, not just the flock, leaders. <laughs> and he says, how can you being evil speak what's good? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. So the mouth speaks what is in your heart, what's filling your heart. Doesn't take much discernment to know whether someone's good or bad. <laughs> Listen to what they say. Weigh that up. 
and discernment comes very quickly. People say, oh, you move in the word of knowledge. Say, yes, I do. God's been training me up for years to listen and to speak only what he tells me to speak. And he shows me a lot more than he tells me to speak. But sometimes he tells me that, so I have to pray into those things. The power of your prayer, that's the power of your tongue coming out, the power of your mouth. It's interesting, isn't it? Your face has got a few, uh, few entrances. You've got a pair of eyes, a pair of ears. It's amazing, isn't it? I, only one mouth. Obviously, that gets you in enough trouble. <laughs> Amen. But all of these things relate to your soul or your personality or your image. What have I done? Have I? Did I look uncomfortable? Did I? Okay. So hang on, I'll walk like this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, mate, I'm in a funny mood. <laughs> was I really walking like that, wasn't I? <laughs> Either make the tree good and its fruit will be good or make the tree rotten. You know when you give your hearts to Christ, it's amazing that you actually made the tree good that day. Doesn't it amaze you? I, as soon as I read this, and I've known this, you've all known this scripture, you've all read it sometime in your life, I just kept getting reminded of Romans 10. Let's read Romans 10. Praise God. How's that almost open to the page? One off. Have we got, we got glasses here? Uh, no, I've used yours before. I was blinder than when I tried them. <laughs> right, here he comes. Ta, thanks. Praise God. <laughs> you can tell I'm in a bad in one of those moods. Eh? <laughs> the righteousness of faith in Romans ten six says speaks this way. Say speaks. What does speak mean? It means it's got to do with your mouth. Is that right? Okay. The righteousness of faith speaks this way. Don't say in your heart who will ascend into heaven. That's to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss. That's to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? It says this, the word is near you. It's in your mouth and it's in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. That if you confess with your mouth, say your mouth. If I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, people say to me, your life changed that day. The new nature came upon me that day. I know that. But I see this. I see this is like getting something into your heart. How do you get something into your heart? It's got to be a question you've got to ask. Yesterday, do you know Lion? Lion? Yep. He gave his heart to the Lord yesterday. <laughs> that should excite you. <laughs> Yesterday, I was talking to an old surfer and he said, uh, he said, I'm agnostic. He was sitting here in the garden. He said, I'm agnostic. I said, you know what agnostic means? He said, yes. He said, um, he said once I heard Bob Hawke speak, he said his father was a pastor, a minister. 
And he said, but he was an agnostic because he'd never seen the power of the gospel go out. So he had to see to believe. Amen? This came out of the man's heart. I said, really? I said, let me tell you something. A few years back, nearly 25 years ago, I said, um, can you remember the accident with the young surfers here at the crossing? 25 years? Maybe about, maybe even 30? More? 50 years, isn't it? Don't tell them that, mate. They think I'm old. <laughs> we were only about 22. Yeah, I remember. Every surfer in town turned up at the funeral. It was one of the biggest funerals Adelaide ever saw. And that happened at this crossing here. And then a few years later, a couple who came from Malang, they were against the work of the Lord, remember those dudes? Died at the same crossing, had a head on collision. And then only two years ago, there's a young woman who lives in the house, about four down from the crossing. Her husband got killed at the crossing, walking home from the pub drunk, and a taxi ran him over. Do you remember that? Anybody from up here remember that? Now, we had a, a prophet come from the States. He was a world bull riding champion. And he was a beautiful dude. He was an old cowboy. But he had a prophetic gift on him. And he came. And I, I, I said, what are you doing here? He said, he said I don't know. He said, uh, he said, one of my specialties is breaking curses. I said, well, come down the road here. There must be a curse on this crossing. And we're going to break it because there have been three lots of deaths on that crossing, one after the other, starting with the boys. And um, we broke the power of that curse, and I believe it was broken. We haven't heard of an accident there since. And I, as I was speaking this, Lion said, stop that. He said, he said the hair on the back of my neck's going up. <laughs> he said, I'm getting emotional. I said, that guy came specifically to break the curse. He said, I don't believe that. I said, well, I'm telling you, agnostics have got to see stuff. So would you like to see the power of God? He goes, yeah. So give me your hands. Took his hands. And I said, right now, you're going to get the proof that you're not agnostic any longer. I said, say this. If there is a Jesus Christ, please come into my heart said it straight away and he believed because he wanted to get it right. He's been, been crook. Went through the sinner's prayer. If there is a Jesus, come. Mate, God touched him immediately. He started bawling his eyes out. He said, Ooh, what's happening to me? <laughs> the proof was the Spirit of God would come the minute we start praying. You don't have to do too much. You just got to be bold enough to speak. He was transformed in split second morning. This morning we go down to speak to his wife, and she's a Philippine Pino girl, and she is full of Christ. Something has happened in her, has spurred her on, and he's hearing stuff I don't think he's ever heard. <laughs> she wanted to come to church today, but I had stuff to do. The change in that man was dramatic and, and will keep on going. He won't admit it too much, you know what they like, <laughs> but you could see. The new nature of Christ came on him through the power of his spoken word and his believing in his heart, according to that scripture. That scripture says that whatever you believe in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. What the heart is full of, the mouth will speak. I can give you scripture after scripture that tells you that the power of your tongue is so important. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. You know, we're going to be responsible when we get before God for every word that we speak that's not right. 
And, and I like what this man says. Your tongue needs to be healed. <laughs> I don't care whether you're a Christian 30 years, 40 years. I need reminding of this regularly. How you reckon? Oh, good preacher. Keep on going. My God, you're noisy, you mumbo. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Come on, you can draw it out if you start. <laughs> Praise God. Jesus, when he said, either make the tree good and its fruit good, establishes the direct connection between the mouth and the heart using parabolic language. Anybody know what parabolic means? Doesn't matter. <laughs> yes, goes from there to there. Yeah. Amen. Because everywhere you can link this same scripture right through the Bible and the principle that he's teaching. He refers to the heart as the tree and to the words that come out of your mouth as the fruit. Your heart is the tree, whatever's in there is going to come out of your mouth. So you're either going to leave good fruit or you're going to leave bad fruit. Amen? Depending on the nature that you have. If the nature is evil, it needs to be changed. You hear me out there in Zoom land? If the nature is evil, change the source. Repent. Change the source. Now there's a few things. Actually, I just want to give you some outlines here. I think In uh, Psalm 45, my heart overflows with a good theme. I address my verses to the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And then these are the words the writer addresses to the king, to the Messiah. You are fairer than the sons of men. Grace is poured upon your lips, therefore God has blessed you forever. Grace is poured out upon your what? Lips, your tongue. Fear of God comes when you line up your mouth with the promises in the word of God. Anybody want to know the path to the fear of the Lord? Because the thing every one of us need to grow into and we'll stay strong in him. Amen? That's part of our spiritual growth. Another scripture says this. Oh, I like Actually, I can't get out of that one. My heart overflows with a good thing. If you've got a good nature, if you're righteous in God because you've given your heart to God, it's only good stuff going to come out of your mouth. It's going to change the way you talk. You notice people who give their hearts to Christ start talking differently. That's because the nature, the nature has changed in them. I want to go further than that. I want to say that once we receive the gift of tongues, then you start speaking out God's will. Revelation knowledge is released, so you start to hear God. Because you line yourself up with that nature that's brand new inside you. Amen? The nature of the Holy Spirit. My heart overflows with a good theme. God has blessed me forever. Because I've poured that out of my lips, he's blessed me forever. Say, he's blessed me forever. <laughs> Praise God. He's blessed me forever. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. There's so many, there's so many scriptures in the Bible that reveal that. Amen. David. David's probably one of the best examples of speaking in line with God. He faces a giant. What's he say? He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dare raise himself up against the armies of the living God? Amen. <laughs> That's how we should be. Don't go out there calling them more <laughs> uncircumcised. They might prove it. <laughs> Sorry, I just thought I'd throw that in just to keep you on track. <laughs> <laughs> Is that done wrong? <laughs> oh, good, she missed that one. 
<laughs> and he says to me, let's, he says, don't talk to him before a meeting because what you're going to talk to him about will come out of his mouth for sure. <laughs> What's in your heart will come out of your mouth. Amen? It will come out of your mouth. We need to be people who are practical. You know one of the first things you do when your nature changes? You become a helper. You become someone who wants to do good to other people. I'm still in transition. <laughs> I know, Jeffy. <laughs> I'm still in transition. But I've got to tell you, I'm changing step by step, bit by bit, because I'm starting to understand this nature. I can't change what comes out of my mouth, because obviously it's what's in my heart. But I can come before God and repent and keep the slate clean and keep walking in that new nature. And from one increment of faith to the next, I can move on. Do you know that? God wants you to be people who start healing your own tongues. Can you believe that? Because with your tongue, you believe. With your heart. You know, in that Romans 10 where it says, with your tongue you believe, what's it say there? I really, I, that scripture is one of my favourites because it was my salvation was in that scripture. It says, what does it say? The word is you, in your mouth and in your heart. Remember that, okay? Two components, mouth, heart. The word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. Not a long way, right? That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your, that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What a wonderful miracle. You speak from your mouth, you believe it in your heart. How do you get it into your heart? You speak it from your mouth. Do you remember when you were at school, little kids? This is a teacher's, like Paul Davies. One times one, here's one. I don't even need to think about it. Learning it off by heart. What a lucky thing. <laughs> two times two is four. Five times seven. How are you guys? You didn't do your times tables. <laughs> Six times seven. Boy, that's very good. Do you have to think about it? Nine times nine. You learned it off by what? It went in, didn't it? As little kids, four times four is? You don't need to think. It's in there. Isn't it? That's what the scripture is saying. The word coming out of your mouth is because it's in your heart. So you can reverse that and through your mouth put the word into your heart. Two times two is? That's how I put that into my heart. That's how I learned it off by heart. Off by heart. Two times two is? Two times three is? It's it. Well, you're very good. <laughs> That's great, isn't it? This is how you learn stuff. Two times five? See, I put that in when I was a little kid. It's still in there. It's still in there. Oh, that was closer. You guys betting on that thing living, eh? <laughs> it was a millipede. I nearly said one. Right. Two times three is six. It's in my heart. Now, if I speak this, I believe in Jesus Christ. What am I doing? Priming my heart. Jesus died for me. What am I doing? Priming my heart. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What am I doing? My ears are hearing what my mouth is speaking. Am I right? 
the most basic, simplest fact. And then I got saved because I actually believed what I'd actually put into my heart. I went to Catholic school as a little kid. I won't tell you about all the bad stuff I used to do there, but I went to Catholic school as a little kid. And I learned off by heart. And somewhere along the way, they taught me about Jesus. And that had never left me. And when I was 35, someone asked me, do you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? I said, of course I do. Have you ever invited him into your life? Now that's a different matter. How do I do that? They led me to the Lord. I bawled my eyes out. I was saved. Totally saved. Praise God. I believed what was in my heart that had been put in there through repeating it. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Our tongues need healing. How do we do that? I get a biblical picture of the tongue. Out of the over, overflow of the heart, the mouth will speak. We've just been preaching that. What about the tongue itself? There's so many scriptures. I like James. James is, uh, what, what about this one? James 1.27. James speaks about the kind of religion God accepts. He says, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Isn't that interesting? The first positive requirement of a pure religion isn't church going. Oh, phew, I got past that. <laughs> it's not church going. Or even Bible reading. It's looking after and showing practical love to those who are in need. Primarily orphans and widows. Amen. Let me suggest if you are in any way religious that you take time to look in the mirror of the word of God found in James 1. Because if you don't control your tongue, your religion is totally worthless. That's what the word of God says. If you can't control your tongue, you're wasting your time being religious. Well, that's a serious word, isn't it? Hmm? Praise God. If you want to have a religion that's accepted by God, it must be demonstrated first and foremost in caring for those who are in need. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I examine my life and I think, oh, well, I haven't done too badly there. I do care for other people and I try to help them if I can. That's because the new nature is in here. That's because of the new nature. Do you want to know if someone's fair dinkum? Listen to what comes out of their mouth. Amen. Is this helping anybody today? It's helping me. Because I'm having to change my tongue. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he's a perfect man. Oh, I like that, don't you? If he's never in fault in what he says, he's a perfect man. Any perfect people here today? All right, Jeffrey, I'd keep my hand down if I were you. We all know. <laughs> We can all see. <laughs> Praise God. Are able to keep his whole body in check. James 3 says, when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or we'll take ships as an example. Although they're so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder. Wherever the pilot wants to go, Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, the world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person. Say it corrupts the whole person. You, this is important. Your tongue can corrupt you. Holy dooly. 
sets the whole course of his life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It's a restless evil full of deadly poison. You know, we could break these scriptures down and see exactly what the tongue does, including becoming a poison to our body. Want to know what sickness is caused? One of the main causes? What you speak. Don't agree with the doctors all the time. They're guessing. They're called practices. They practice. Don't they? And they practice and they can only tell you what's wrong with you by the people who've gone before you. Praise God. But you were different. What about the spies went into the land? Moses sends Caleb and he sends Joshua with eight unbelieving heathen Christians. <laughs> Heathens <laughs> in the form of Christianity. And he sends them into the land and they spy the land out and they've got a promise from God that he's about to cause them to cross into the promised land. Say promise. In other words, it was a land full of promises and we have the same thing in front of us. We have a land full of promises. Your life is being set on fire by the word of God and as you walk, he's going to show you the promises that are going to become yours in reality. Amen. And what happens with these two? Ten come back. And I said, yep, the land's full of milk and honey. Twelve of them, all in agreement. And then the ten say, but. Say, but. Don't but. Once you've got a promise, shut up. Half the problem is we talk too much. That's one of the diseases of the tongue. Or oh, when you listen to people who talk too much, tell them to shut up. <laughs> Because they're giving themselves away. They're revealing themselves to everybody else. Amen? They're better off. You know, what's the, the proverb that says, better off say nothing and, and let people think you're wise than open your mouth and they can see you're a fool. <laughs> Is that, isn't that it? I hear people sometimes go, blah, 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 blah. Every time I do that, I think, oh, I wonder what they're hiding. And then I get inquisitive. You don't want me inquisitive. <laughs> you really don't. Because then I'm going to find out what the problem is. They're better off keep it shut. What's a, I like the blind term, you know, the, the deaf and dumb term. They go, shut up. <laughs> Amen. It's probably the wisest thing you're going to hear here this morning. Praise God. We stumble in it many ways. Those two that came back with a positive confession, Caleb and Joshua, eight of them said, but, but, they're giants in the land. They're too strong for us. I want to tell you, you and Jesus are an incredible force to be reckoned with. Amen. Nothing is impossible to you. Nothing. Nothing's impossible to you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Just line up your mouth with his promise. Done deal. Done deal. Oh, but it's taken a long time. Well, you might be working some patience in you. <laughs> you might need some. Timothy. Timothy's a beauty. James speaks about the horse's mouth. What's Timothy speak about? He says, fresh and salt water can't come out of the same faucet or tap. Fresh and salt water cannot come out of the same tap. In fact, the Bible says it's impossible for fresh and salt water to come out of the same source. It's about the only thing the Bible says is impossible. But you know, I know so many Christians that have made that totally possible. They speak well one minute, and the minute any resistance comes, they're speaking badly. 
You can speak the power of God. You can be blessed by visiting speakers and you'll be blessed until the first resistance comes and you open your mouth and you just ruin it all with one word. How important is it that we check our words? How important is it? We set ourselves backwards through our words if we don't believe. These two, these two, they believe the word of God, they believe the promise of God, and they wouldn't take the but. They said, no, we can take it. Let's go in there straight away and take that land. Amen? You've got to become people of faith that when you hear the word of God, don't allow any doubt in because your mouth will end up speaking it if your heart takes hold of the doubt. Praise God. Don't doubt. Do not doubt. You're in a time at the moment where the Holy Spirit tells me that there's room for doubt. Look forward, keep going straight ahead and don't doubt. He's given you promises, keep them. Take that to the bank, that's from the Lord. In fact, you can take that to the bank. <laughs> that's, you can. That's, that's what it's about at the moment. Praise God. Don't doubt. Do not doubt for a second. When the promises come, line up your word with those promises. Don't doubt, Joyce. I know you don't. I know you don't. And if it comes, you just line up with those promises again. See, victory is there. Where's Catherine Lee? Yeah. Same thing. Catherine Lee, you should be in here listening. Praise God. She's in a battle at the moment, fighting cancer. The word of God is going to set her free. Thank you, Lord. Salt and fresh water can't come out of the same source. So if that's the case, change the source. If you're speaking salty and fresh water, and the Bible says it's impossible, something's got to change. Do you know, we can go in divergent ways with our walk with God. He gives us the word, right? And we claim it when we're young Christians. And we start walking until someone causes us to doubt. And then this is what happens. I go down that track, believing God, and I'm going to go down this track, believing the doubt. Or well, it's not going to be long before the tracks are divergent. They're not parallel. Because it's going to hurt if you keep going. <laughs> because you're going to be doing the splits. <laughs> One leg is going to have to give over to the other. And if you don't take hold of the word of God, then the opposite is going to happen and you're going to go off track. Amen? Can you see that? Praise God. Anybody getting anything out of today? I am. I'm refreshing my memory. When all said and done, though, there's got to be steps to healing this i could go i'm going to i've got some of these books i'm going to give them away i'm i'm sorry i've left some home i'll i'll bring them tomorrow night first steps to healing three simple steps practical scriptural steps to dealing with the problem of your tongue do you want to know that i'm going home now see you later <laughs> get hungry get hungry to know this stuff Firstly, call your problem by its right name, sin. In Spanish, I used to go to the pubs with my cousins, go on notice here, and they'd shout me a drink. And they were alcoholics, so it would be an alcoholic drink. But I'd say, no thanks, I'll have a sin. Sin means without, without alcohol. So I'd have a bottle of sin. <laughs> without alcohol down the path. Call your problem by its right name, sin. It's important that we become honest as long as we use some fancy psychological terminology to cover, condone, excuse or pretend that our problem is not really there, nothing will happen. Who wants results today? Practical results. Father, I forgive me the way I use my tongue. I'm, going to, I'm the first to repent. Sometimes my tongue can be poisonous. Amen. And it stunts my walk. It stunts my relationship.
When I come to the moment of truth, God moves in and helps me if I'm fair income. But if I try to cover it over with some excuse, I don't get set free. Who wants freedom today? I know. I don't know about you guys, but I'm guilty of all this stuff. You see, I can admit it because I want to walk on with God. I want to be a powerhouse for God. I want to walk in the power of God. I want when people come to me like yesterday that I'm going to show them the power of God is in us. Praise God. His wife asked me today to pray for her back. Praise God. Actually, I had a family come here yesterday. I haven't seen them in 12 years. They're Indian people from Melbourne. Had a beautiful church in Melbourne. It was only an infant church, and it's grown now. You've got a church of about 110 people, but he's also planted other churches. I think, was it 25 churches? He, who was here yesterday? 25 churches, was it? That he's planted in, 10, in the last 10 years. His life's gone fruitful. Oh my God, all I could hear come out of that man's mouth was good. I could not hear one negative word come out of his mouth. And then he tells me, they've been to the tent when we had our, our miracle tent. They came two or three times. In fact, I can remember once I asked them to say grace. And the guy came out, he said, oh, he said, I've got to ask the Lord so I can say a grace that comes from him, not from me. And he poured this out. And I, I've always thought Indian people could be too religious. But I've got to tell you, this man blessed me out of my socks yesterday. He said, Raph, he said, when you came to the church, you told us to start praying, spend time with the Lord, get up in the morning and spend time. He said, I started doing that. And then he said, I got hungry. He said, now, he said, I had to give up my business. He said, and give my life fully to the, to the gospel of the kingdom. He said, I had to do that. He said, now I'm praying about 10 hours a day in tongues. And he said, the miracles that are coming out of our church are astounding. And not only is he doing it, he's got all his churches, he started doing the same thing. So he put it on, on his phone yesterday, he plugged into his circuit, and all you could hear is these dudes praying in the spirit. It's going around the clock, non-stop. I'm going to get him down here to preach. Because I was so blessed yesterday. Yeah, you guys were blessed, weren't you? Just so blessed. Power of the tongue. So call it sin. If you, if you need to change what you're speaking out of your mouth, I don't want to look at you because I can see stuff, okay? Call it sin. That's the first thing you do. That's called repentance. Anybody want to repent straight away? We might as well do it right now. Father, it's not if I've used my tongue, it's every time I've used my tongue wrongly, Father. Change me. Forgive me. I repent. I confess it to you. I turn away from my evil speaking, from my old nature. I put on the new nature today, Father. And I speak out of the new nature because I can't tame my tongue, but you can as I hand this to you, Lord. Amen. Secondly, confess your sin and receive forgiveness and cleansing. So right now, Father, I receive cleansing from whatever my tongue has got me into. I ask your forgiveness. I break every curse I've agreed with. I break the power of every word I've spoken over myself or anybody else that has hurt them and not blessed them. And I thank you that you are forgiving me and cleansing me according to John 1, 7. For if I walk in the light as you yourself are in the light, I have fellowship with you and with one another. And the blood of Jesus, your son, cleanses me from all sin. If I say that we have no sin, I'm deceiving myself and the truth is not in me. That's the other thing has got to be healed in the tongue. Lies. You need to repent of lying. Amen. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
praise God. Step three, refuse sin and yield to God. There's a negative and positive which go together like the two opposite sides of the same coin. You must exercise your will both ways. You must say no to sin and yes to righteousness. Yes to God. Amen? Say no to sin. Yes to God. See the power of your tongue's already working. Isn't it? Out of that new nature. You can't say no to sin without saying yes to God because you'll be in a vacuum. It'll be filled again with the same problem. Anybody notice that you keep going around the mountain? That's because he didn't say yes to God. He just asked your forgiveness, run off, and God says, say yes to me. Yes to my promises. Just like those two spies. You know what happened to the other ten? They didn't go into that promised land. Their kids did. Any of their kids who were under 18 went into that promised land, but they didn't. He was so angry with them, he, he was so ticked off that they didn't believe the promise and spoke against it. The power of their tongue condemned them. Isn't that amazing? Hmm? In Romans 6, Paul says, don't let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey its lusts. I want to tell you something. When you pray in the spirit, sin hadn't got the power to condemn you anymore. Amen? It hasn't got the power. Praise God. Romans 6, if you're after that scripture. Sin hasn't got the power to condemn you any longer. Then turn to God and say, I yield my tongue to you and I ask you to control the member which I can't control. Speak that in yourself right now. Praise God. Say, God, I yield my tongue to you and I ask you to control the member which I can't control. Thank you, Lord. You've got to accept the fact you can't tame or control your own tongue. Do you realise that? And the reason you've got a tongue is so you can give your heart to Christ. Isn't that wonderful? That's the reason you've got a tongue. Because your heart gets programmed by it, your heart programs it. You've got a tongue, you've got to turn back to the Lord. I listen to people and almost immediately I can tell you where they stand with God. It's terrific, isn't it? No one's going to talk to me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> You've got to have a sense of humour. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I think that's it. We're going to do some communion. Yeah. Can I get the communion guys out? Thank you, Lord. Did you get anything out of today? I did. I've got to tell you, I got something out of today. <laughs> We get up here, we preach to ourselves, and if you guys get something, well, that's terrific. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Praise God. Ten hours a day, I can't believe that Indian guy. I have, but ten hours a day. I mean, ten hours. There's been times, I've had seasons that have done that. Ten hours. You do the first two, <laughs> and I do the third one. What do you reckon, Anna? I'll take ten minutes. Ten minutes? You take ten minutes? Okay. <laughs> oh, actually, we should start that prayer thing again. You know, we end up praying in tongues here. We just end up praying for eighteen months solid. The night watch, the Jewish night watch. We had everybody in the church here at the time take a three-hour watch starting at six at night and it went through to six in the morning. You know what that did to this coast? It changed the whole coast. Every church benefited out of that prayer time and it went unbroken for 18 months. But I want to tell you, it did take its toll. It broke some of the people too. <laughs> some of the people fell away because of it because they couldn't keep going. Any, any time that they wouldn't do it, I would fill in the three-hour lot. 
to make sure that it was unbroken. And, and the reason I did that, I read a book on a guy called um, the Moravians. Anybody heard of the Moravians? They had more to do with spreading the gospel right around the world, including getting Wesley saved and people who actually impacted the world with the word of God. And these Moravians were persecuted in Austria. And so they went, they went in, I think, a corner of Austria where there was a guy called Count Zinzendorf. And Zinzendorf gave them refuge. And you know, he had a 36 acre lot that he gave to them. It's amazing, this place here is 36 acres. <laughs> And when I read that, God quickened something in my heart. He said, those Moravians impacted the world more than anybody in history, in Christian history, because they started a prayer, a watchtower, a prayer chain that lasted 100 years without being broken. 100 years without being broken. Can you imagine? They started praying nonstop. So in that 100 years, there wasn't one hour that was missed out that they weren't praying to God. And they sent missionaries all over the world from that place, from that 36 acres. They sent missionaries all over the world. Their prayers were answered. Healings broke out. Men of God who spread the gospel, you know, like Wesley and, and um, who was the other one? There was another famous bloke who I touched by them. Smith Wigglesworth was impacted by them. Huh? Who? Huh? Yeah, never heard of him. Hey? <laughs> Who's? Um, it's the Great Awakening. Um, Jonathan Edwards. Edwards, yes, he was a preacher. He's a Welshman. That's good. Isn't it? Man from Cardiff. Praise God. Praise God. A Welshman. He brought an incredible revival, and it came out of those Moravians. It came out of those people who didn't stop praying for revival. Well, this Indian church, they're doing the same thing. They're praying for revival. Now they're praying for us here as a church. And that's horrific. Praise God. I'm going to get in touch and get some stuff so you can know who they are. Have we got? Yeah. Thanks, Pam. It's good to give it to me last, otherwise he didn't leave me all behind. No. <laughs> you know what this represents? The body of our Lord Jesus. Amen. This is your provision for healing, deliverance, salvation, whatever you need. By faith. Be a partaker of it. Examine yourself. If, you, if you've got anything against anybody, get rid of it right now. Release them. Forgive them. So it becomes an incredible blessing to you. When you're ready, take it. His body hung on a cross for us. Amen. What courage. Greater love hath no man than he lay his life down for his brother. And he expects us to do the same for each other. The wonderful grape, self packaged wine maker, representative of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Washing you clean, availing a path to the throne of God so you can make a request to him. Are going to be greedy and knock that off? Praise God. Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, God bless you. Have we got food on today? Hey? Eh?